Jen's going to lead us in our kids' song uh, this morning. So, Jen, take it away. Thank you, Jen. Good singing, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. You know, it's, it's almost October, and so I felt like I needed to share this uh, with you. How do you fix a broken jack-o'-lantern? With a pumpkin patch. Uh, yes, yes. A seasonal joke to begin. And I would like to give full credit to Anna Rattan. And that's a contribution of Anna Rattan, so... Hi, honey. Good job. Um, I'm going to put a slide up here to highlight this week's uh, Faith at Home focus. It's called Listening and Doing. Listening and Doing. And as uh, Laura and I explained last week, and uh, Laura, Julie, and I explained the week before that, the idea with these Faith at Home focuses is they're going to be um, uh, connected thematically to what I'm talking about on a service. So James chapter 1, verse 22. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So it's not just about listening, it's about doing. Now to explain what, um, why this is important, I'm going to show you a statue. So this statue is um, it's a photo by the Denver Post. And so this happened, like look, look closely at the hands and feet. Now this is something I shared with uh, some of the adults in a sermon, I think it was last year, but I don't think the, the kids got to see it, or our young people got to see it. I showed it to some of our young people in the confirmation process, but you noticed, so look at the hands and the feet. The hands and feet of Jesus are missing for some reason. And the reason for that was because back in 2007, so I guess 13 years ago, there was a big storm, you know, thunder, lightning, the whole bit. And uh, struck this lightning struck the hands and feet of this statue of Jesus. And this is a big statue. It's like 22 feet high. It's really amazing, and it's taken uh, care of by the by these nuns uh, who are in this it 's not a monastery it, a nunnery i don 't think that 's the real term convent right it 's very nunnery where did I get that um, i don 't know some some movie anyway so they they take care of this, and a reporter from the Denver Post went over to speak to some of the nuns and said, "Well, I can 't believe that you know the hands and feet of Jesus have been you know taken off this statue in this storm. Are you going to replace them and well she said well we we totally survive on donations, so we 're not sure if we can maybe." But as I was thinking about that story and looking at that statue, I thought, you know what? There's something really interesting, something really profound about a statue with the hands and feet of Jesus missing. Why? Because we are the hands and feet. We, as followers of Jesus, are his hands and feet. And so it's kind of a reminder that he's the brains of the operation. He's the one you know, who gives us wisdom and knowledge about what to do. And then we carry it out in our lives. And so that's why being the hands and feet and serving and helping others, part of the reason why it is so important. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. And so the next slide shows you our trajectory 
for these faith at home uh, focuses. So Sundays in the month, so they're always going to be connected to the pastor's teaching, that's me. So the first Sunday, a memorization focus, so we're going to return to that next week. Sunday two, prayer focus. Uh, Sunday three, Bible focus last week, and hope you, hopefully you had good conversations about perseverance. And Sunday four, today, a service focus. And so that's what we are doing with this listening and doing exercise. Now, our philosophy about this, a couple things, simple but meaningful, okay? Simple but meaningful, because people are, are you know, tired, people are exhausted, and so some of the stuff that, that we would recommend um, at the start of coronavirus might be a bit less nuanced and less details than something we might recommend, recommend now. We want people to do it. Um, so simple but meaningful. Also, think lifestyle, not curriculum, right? Lifestyle, not curriculum. So people are taking the lead in the home, and we are going to help and provide some resources that are simple but meaningful to do that, that are adaptable for a variety of ages. So this is what it's this week. I call it Listening and Doing. And so I don't have my phone on me, but in the app, if you go into more and then blogs, you'll see it listed there. Also, it's on the website uh, under blogs. At the same, and also, there's a tab right on the, the live stream page if you're watching through the Westminster website, where it's called Listening and Doing, and it highlights three options that you can do. And so the first one's about giving or donating something together. This is about money, okay? A lot of, a lot of people, places aren't maybe receiving the kind of donations or, what, or having the interaction with people, but they can use money. So you have a discussion as a family about what is a, a local organization that helps people who are feeling vulnerable or in need, and you discuss it together, and everyone thinks of something they can financially contribute. So it's not just about parent, and maybe it's Youth Haven, right, because that's something we're supporting this month. Think about, okay, What's something I can contribute? It's not just mom and dad, but maybe there's a young person that has some allowance. Maybe a, a, a youth has a job. Let's contribute something and give together. So that's one option. Another option is about the food bank. So every year we help the Berry Food Bank. And Thanksgiving's coming up uh, in, in, in a couple weeks, in the middle of October. And they, they're in a kind of a, a big situation of need. And people with job loss or stress or uncertainty, etc., um, are really going to need some help. And so maybe you think, you know what, we're going to get some items as a family and we're going to bring it and we're going to go bring it together as long as their reception hours um, fit with your schedule. So maybe that's it. Maybe a third thing is you look around and you identify a need in your neighborhood. So maybe there's a new family, they could use a meal or someone's struggling, someone's passed away, they need a meal. Uh, and you can help and do so in a safe way. Maybe Another option could be, hey, they're so-and-so, and they've got a busy week, or they're having some physical health challenges. They need their lawn raked. You have that conversation together. What's the need in your neighborhood? And you do it together. It's about listening and doing. So we hope those are some ideas that are service-focused based, based on the text, based on James 1, that you can think through as a family, whoever's living with you, and you can be the hands and feet of Jesus. And in this sense, we complete the statue. So let's uh, have a prayer together, and it's going to be a uh, kind of a call and response prayer. So repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father we, thank you for your goodness we thank you for your goodness and all the love that you have for us. In the coming week, help us to identify an idea and act on it as the hands and feet of Jesus. In his precious name we pray.